Hi everyone, uh, I am Dr. Saurabh Dikshit, a laparoscopic surgeon from New Delhi. So today I am going to discuss a very small but very important topic and that is the role of supplemental nutrition. If we talk about supplemental nutrition, we have two ways of supplementing the nutrition and let me show you them what they are. Focus. So nutrition is of two types. Nutrition is of two types. One is enteral mode of nutrition, one is enteral mode of nutrition and one is parenteral mode of nutrition. So one is enteral and one is parenteral. If you talk about if you talk about enteral mode of nutrition, this is via elementary tract. Via elementary tract. Yes. And if you talk about parenteral nutrition, this is via venous root. This is via venous root. Now let me tell you what are the two venous root we have. We have a central venous root. We have a central venous root and we have a peripheral venous root. We have a central and we have a peripheral venous root. Now let me tell you what is the central venous root that we have. You can access the neck veins via jugular or via subclavian. Do you know jugular is easy to do but if you do a jugular the catheter will be hanging like this and thus the ergonomics of the patient will be disturbed. Now if we talk about if we talk about the subclavian root we prefer infraclavicular subclavian so nutrition tends to be given for a longer time so the ergonomics of the patient should not be destroyed and hence infraclavicular approach is what is preferred now. Now when we talk about the parenteral nutrition the biggest problem is the complaint of thrombophlebitis. If you give a high osmolar solution via peripheral root this will result in severe thrombophlebitis. So that is the reason we have two composition of parenteral nutrition with us. One is a TPN and one is a PPN. Let me tell you what is difference between TPN and PPN. The parenteral nutrition, the parenteral nutrition which is given via central venous root is known as total parenteral nutrition. And something which is given via peripheral venous root is known as peripheral parenteral nutrition. So PPN and TPN are two very, very, very important things. Let me show you the TPN. What is TPN like? There are two types of TPN or there are two types of PPN. I'll explain you this also. But TPN or PPN students can be of two in one or three in one. 2-in-1 and 3-in-1. What is the difference? 2-in-1 contains carbs plus proteins. And this contains carbs plus proteins plus lipids. 3-in-1. Both. There is a myth that 2-in-1 is TPN and 3-in-1 is PPN or vice versa. Both of them are available in two forms. But check what is the students, what is the classical difference between 2-in-1 and 3-in-1. I will just illust illustrate in front of you. It's going to be a little bit What's this is a video super. So 3 in 1, the advantage of 3 in 1 is that it has lipids. Lipids means what? Lipid means lipids is essential for emulsion of fatty acids. So vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K, K which is which is absent or which is which is in lesser form in malnourished people. Yes, you need them for speedy recovery. But the drawback is that lipids, yes, they often prolong the hospital stay. They often prolong the hospital stay. Now I am going to show you a 3-in-1, 3-in-1 TPN. What is this? What is this? Can you see there are three compartments? There are three compartments. Now please focus on them. Please focus on, focus on them. This is the this is the lipid part. Can you see that white milk like this is the lipid part? This is the carb part. Carb part. Yes, this is a carb part. And these are the amino acids. So this is the protein, protein, carbs and lipids. Now if you talk about proteins, yes, they are all essential amino acids which are mentioned here. Can you see all the essential amino acids are present? What is the classical difference between TPN and PPN? The osmolarity of TPN is more than 900 and PPN is a low osmolar. So I will show you the osmolarity is also written in this and the osmolarity just focus on this point. Can you focus on this point? Yes, the osmolarity. What is the osmolarity written here? It's 624. So this is a low osmolar solution. Now, how do we give them? Whenever you want to start this, you have to puncture this. So can you see? You will just puncture. You will fold this. You will fold this and the chambers will rupture into each other. 
so one chamber has already opened okay it's not opening don't worry it will not rupture but anyhow it is not opening we will so you have to force puncture this we will open this because we are going to start it in the patient so we have to force them we will mix all the all the chambers yes so after doing all those lapro years of laparoscopic surgery the, the strength has bit uh, yeah gone boom can you see yes it is ruptured now again again now i will rupture it into the protein components can you see we have ruptured it so can you see now it has been mixed yes it has been mixed and now we will start it in the patient we will start it in the patient remember since it is a high osmolar solution since it is a high osmolar solution we should give it at a very low rate what is the biggest drawback that you have if you give it at a too rapid rate there will be hepatic steatosis there will be hepatic dysfunction hepatic dysfunction is seen when you give it at a very high rate and that is why the maximum rate should not exceed if you talk about the carb infusion it should not exceed more than 5 to 7 grams per kg per minute so this is very important as far as t pain is concerned some very important complications the first complication that you should be aware of is hyperglycemia hyperglycemia and therefore it is contraindicated in diabetes so before you start this even if the patient is non diabetic you should ensure that the patient's glycemic status is okay my uh, my rmo dr javed has already taken the glycemic status and what was that what was the blood sugar of that patient i think it's one normal, one yeah. yeah it's 190 something yeah. to random was 190 so we can jolly well give the second important thing is bacche it's it is causing fluid overload it causes fluid overload and that is why it is contraindicated in patients with congestive heart failure third it increases the level it increases the level of co2 inside the body and therefore it is also contraindicated for copd patients then the next and the very important complication is electrolyte imbalance electrolyte imbalance since it is having insulin also this is having insulin also inside therefore there is hypokalemia often initiated you can have hypo more than hyper and any type of it can be hyponatremia hypernatremia kalemia calcemia magnesemia and phosphatemia these are some important complications apart from that you can have hepatic steatosis arising from this you can have uremia arising from this you can have metabolic acidosis and do you know we have seen patients developing acute cholecystitis that is a calculus cholecystitis because tpn also causes col also causes cholestasis so whenever you start tpn you should be aware of these things one very important thing is when it is contraindicated it is contraindicated in five conditions diabetes mellitus second is acidosis alkalosis in patients of sepsis because it promotes translocation of bacteria and hyperglycemic status further reduces the inflammation and immunity of the patient and the next one is hypokalemia and hypophosphatemia because hypokalemia and hypophosphatemia are known complication if you give it in a background you will have a drastic effect remember one very important thing in a patient who can tolerate enteral feed do start the supplementation with enteral feeds via feeding tube via that is via rice tube or via naso jejunal tube if the patient is not in a condition to take elementary feeds then only we start with this so again in a nutshell i will show you that there are three compartments in this we have mixed them and once they have been mixed that is protein lipids and the carbs now this will be started in this patient at a low rate so thankful to you for watching i hope this video was informative and me dr sarab and dr javed is going to sign this video thank you very much do subscribe us